Why is this rape case from India back in 2014 coming up now? What happened? Right. So we, uh, we, you know, we learned that top executives, Travis Kalanick, the CEO, and Emil Michael, uh, the chief business officer, and his chief deputy, had like ha had been skeptical that this rape had actually occurred, and had uh, sort of propagated a conspiracy theory that Ola, their competitor, might have planted it uh, for some time, and that Travis, even after um, the conviction happened for the driver, sort of continued to float this theory that the rape hadn't occurred. So something that's deeply troubling to employees at Uber. There's an executive you call out specifically, Eric Alexander. Right. He's based in India. What right. did he have to do with So he's this? like a business development guy, but it was really sort of dealing with some of the case and investigating a little bit and got the case file from uh, Uber's attorneys, which included the detailed medical reports of, of this rape victim. And sort of he carried it with, them, with him, him and was fairly cavalier in the opinion of some employees about how he treated the case file. Now, does Eric Alexander still work at the company? No. He, he left basically after we started asking questions about it. So do we know if this was a result of the sexual harassment investigation or as a result of your reporting? Yeah, there's some muddying of the water. I don't think, it doesn't seem like he's one of the 20 people that was left let go um, yesterday. Uh, but you know, there, there are a lot of factors. And you have to remember that this Holder report is also coming. And that could have, there could be, we could see further departures coming from this separate Holder report rather than the Perkins Coie investigation we saw on Tuesday.